Test, test. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation, and this is Cost Accounting 17A, Indirect or Overhead Cost and Cost Allocation. This was taken from what I thought was an unusual problem that I don't see very often. So you'll recall that we allocate indirect or overhead costs. We use those terms interchangeably. And the reason that we allocate rather than trace those costs is that they cannot be easily attached to production. So we trace them or we allocate them and we allocate them based on some activity level normally. Um, I say here that our business is Sturdy Blue Jeans, a blue jean manufacturer. <clears throat> and I say here we apply overhead using direct labor costs for everything, all of our production, not just direct labor costs on a cost sheet. And what I was getting at was when we allocate costs, when we come up with a budgeted allocation, it is based on the entire company, all the job sheets, not just one cost sheet. Another thing that was confusing about this problem was is that the information given to the student wasn't well labeled. So we're going to assume that this is January and this is the period of time when we're going to start our budgeting. This is what we're the month we're going to use for budgeting. And there's three processes. There's cutting the denim material for the jeans, sewing the jeans, and then coloring the fabric. We have direct material and labor. Those are costs with dollar signs. Then we have hours, direct labor hours and machine hours, and those are the two measurements, the two levels of activity that we most commonly use to allocate costs to a product. This problem is unusual because it also gives us factory overhead cost for January, budgeted again, January's budget, and we end up in this question using cost as a level of activity <clears throat> to do budgeting, which is unusual. You don't normally see it. Here is a job in February, the right fit gene job, and we have the same data, same type of data for this job sheet. And then we have our actual results in February. <clears throat> so, once again, January is what we use to budget. This is a job in February, actual. This is actual results in total. Another thing that was unusual was that the labor hours <clears throat> and the overhead cost in the budget, that data was much lower than what we did in February, which I also thought was not realistic that we would do so little business in January in terms of labor hours and cost and so much business in February. But such is life, and we just keep moving on. The point is to show you how to work the problem. So, there are three types of ways that we're allocating overhead. One way is to allocate it based on direct labor cost, which is the unusual one. And the way it ends up getting allocated is overhead cost of $1, overhead cost for every dollar you spend on labor. So, for example, if I click on cutting, we're taking the total overhead cost of 20000 and dividing it by the labor cost of 8000 meaning that we're going to allocate labor costs based on $2.50 of overhead for every dollar of labor. Sewing, click on that. <clears throat> total overhead cost in the budget is 10000 Labor costs are 5000 so for every dollar of sewing, we have $2 overhead for every dollar of labor cost in fabric. We allocate $1.80 of overhead. Sort of unusual. I think this one's easier. The labor, if I click on the cell, <clears throat> we take the overhead cost divided by the labor hours in green, and we find out we end up allocating $20 an hour. If we used machine hours, we would take the overhead costs in blue divided by the machine hours and we get an overhead cost per machine hour. So the last two are overhead costs based on labor hours and allocating overhead costs based on machine hours. So then what we can do is apply overhead to the jobs. 
we can apply it first of all using labor costs. So the only thing that's going to change is overhead applied. The material, the direct material, direct labor we've already costed. The only thing that's changing in examples 2A, B, and C is how we apply overhead. In the first, in the first instance, we take the $2.50 allocation rate in green and we multiply it by, where am I, F40, which is the labor cost 64. So 64 dollars times the 250 in green gives us our overhead applied of a dollar sixty and we do the same thing going across. If I click on sewing for example, we're taking the two dollar allocation rate in green and multiplying it by sixty dollars of labor right above it. I'm gonna hit X so that doesn't change. So that's how we allocate based on labor cost. The next the first uh, the next two examples are a little easier. If we allocate based on direct labor hours, we take that rate of $20 an hour that we figured out earlier, and we're multiplying it by labor hours for the job. So F19 is our labor hours for the right fit gene job of eight hours times the application rate that we came up with for January, $20 an hour per labor hour. That's how we get 160 there. These are the same number calculated differently. If I click on sewing, for example, I get the $20 an hour rate per hour rate for sewing, the application rate in January, multiplied by the February hours for sewing of six, I get the 120. And then finally, we could allocate based on machine hours. So let's look at cutting. We take the application rate per, hour, per machine hour we got in the budget in blue of five, and we multiply that by the machine hours we worked for the job for cutting two machine hours, $10 an hour. If I look at sewing, It's the application rate for January, $2 per machine hour times on the job sheet, the machine hours we work for sewing, which is three, and we come up with our $6 overhead applied. So what we ended up doing here was we had a month in which we had data to calculate overhead allocation rates. That was January was our budgeting period. We had a job cost sheet for the right fit gene job in February. We had actual results for February. This section of the sheet shows the application rates using the January data. One was based on labor cost, one based on labor hours, one based on machine hours. And then we simply applied the overhead, first based on labor costs, which is this line, then based on labor hours, which is this line, that was that section, then based on machine hours, which is this line. So all three of these application rates got applied in 2A, 2B, and C. So we have allocated overhead in three different ways. That's as far as we're gonna get on cost accounting 17A. On the website, we teach the cost book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, for free. You'll see a link to the page right here. We also have the toughest accounting topics that I now teach in live online chats periodically. You can go to the website to get that information, and the cost dates and the times. And finally, the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, you can find on Amazon.com, and I teach it live online every week for free. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.